Kicking up today, we are looking at Saga of the Swamp Thing from Steve Bissett, John Totalben, and the immortal Alan Moore. Oh. I've heard of him. But first, issue 21 of the Swamp Thing redefines his origin. After years of believing that he was scientist Alec Holland, only transformed into a plant in an accident, he finds out he is a plant who thinks he's Alec Holland and has been all this time. What do we think of this new version of the Swamp Thing mythos? In a word, brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Uh, and I'm being serious here because I had not yet read Saga of the Swamp I've been waiting Thing. literally years this, to have this conversation. This is a book that I have been waiting to read and I knew that at some point we were gonna tackle it on DC Daily and I was so excited, so I was like, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna read it probably before the show comes out, so I'm stoked. This is my year, 2019, this is it. <laughs> but the cool thing is, is though, even though I'm not familiar with this specific series, as a comic book fan, I knew about this twist. I knew about this like momentous, event in the the history of Swamp Thing, the character that this when this is revealed, I still knew about it. So to actually read it, I thought that it was such a smart way to tackle this character, this world, and to make the story about, at least with my interpretation, about what it means to have humanity and explore those themes. And I thought it was really, really, truly brilliant. Yeah, it's so, so good and it sets up so many delicious storytelling moments. There's yeah. one thing that I wish it would have included, which is maybe like another page detailing this uh, science about how consciousness can be absorbed through eating and like, what are the ramifications of that? Who knows? I would have loved to see a little bit more about that, but like, I'm a person who's so willing to suspend disbelief in it any situation really so <laughs> I like I was just like all right we're doing that cool moving on mm -hmm. and I like that they that's because it's from sort of the a, a villain's perspective we just see what he kind of needs us to know to yep. go with that yeah. story yeah True. yeah I also I didn't know this was my first time reading this as well yeah and uh I didn't know about that twist I didn't know yeah. about that reveal I always I for whatever I when I first read it, like yeah. and in the pop culture consciousness I just for whatever reason assumed mm -hmm. that it was yeah it was this man who was resurrected or whatever. And so, um, and also being a, a genre fan, I feel like that is such a staple of, you know, horror storytelling. It's yeah. classic. Right. Exactly. Fine, yeah. And so I was sort of already like mind melty, like, oh, that is so <laughs> clever. And also opens up so many possibilities for future stories of like, okay, so we're introducing this concept into this world. Right. What could that mean for other people or other creatures or other forms of consciousness as we learn, you know, in the next couple of books. So it was, it was a really cool introduction and I didn't know it was coming, so it got me and it was really fun. This is one of those things that I think anybody who's read this would agree. This is one of the best runs of comics. Like yeah. it's one of the best iterations of a story and something that they took and really shifted in such uh, a brilliant way. Brilliant. And to me it's so compelling. It's such a compelling twist on the character because now you have somebody who is, there are no limitations of man. Uh, and like you're saying, this isn't a dude who has plant powers. This is the entirety of the green that has the memories of a man. But one specific broken heart that it remembers being, like, come on. And it reconstructs a broken heart, you know? Oh. Um, and that's oh. sad. It is so sad. It's so good. <laughs> uh, but it is it is such a compelling take on this character, and it's brilliantly written, and the artwork is like, oh my oh. god. Oh. It's so psychedelic, yeah. I oh love it. Oh my lord. Super and, 70s, super mm -hmm. great. Yeah. A first issue where your hero is basically dead the whole time, mm -hmm. and somehow it's compelling as all get out. And he's still the title character. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, and this is, it is sort of hard to believe that Alan Moore in writing this book, he'd been working in comics for years on the British side, but this was his first, what we would consider full length ongoing comic, his first. This is what he's like, yeah, let's do this. I'm gonna take one issue to finish the previous plot lines and we're off to the races. Mm -hmm. uh, speaking of which, and what happens, a temporarily insane Swamp Thing in this issue kills Avery Sunderland, the general, uh, who the Floronic Man had poetically trapped in his own facility. Yeah. Did Sunderland deserve his fate, John? I think he got dished a pretty horrendous fate. I don't know, I, I don't think he necessarily deserved that. Um, in, in my opinion, he is studying a specimen. He wanted to get his hands on a specimen to try to understand how did this happen? I'm gonna keep this thing in a freezer so that I can study it. So it's not necessarily about torture, it's about I need to, he might not necessarily know. That is Alec Holland, but it's like this is some swamp thing. 
Uh, I want to study it. I want to have him here so that I can study it. He's super proud of his building. Getting somebody out of jail to come work on it, that's probably not the smartest move. Um, but How do you like his employee relations techniques there? I, but, okay, I like how self-aware he is, where he's like, listen, I'm not an intellect. Mm -hmm. I'm a rich dude, okay? I can do rich dude stuff. I don't bother with the smarts. So tell me what this. Though. Tell me what this is. Oh. So would it change your opinion? And this is sort of unfair to throw at you, but to know that uh, in the series leading up to this, he's been trying to and believes he has now successfully ordered the death of Swamp Thing. The reason he's in the morgue is that he had his people shoot him. But what even is a swamp? Oh. Thing? Okay. <laughs> <You know? laughs> if you saw that thing creep up in your backyard, would you be like? Mm. Or would you be like, kill it! <laughs> Everybody get it! <laughs> oh, <man. Aww. laughs> Clark, where do you stand on this one? Well, okay, so I did not know that information um, when I started reading this issue. And um, I will say that, you know, w without knowing that information, I was like, ah, that might have been a little harsh, but also this guy's a D. Um, <laughs> so, but now knowing that, I'm kind of like, all right. You know, <laughs> like, it's, bye bye He was not very, he, he yeah, he got what he deserved. So. Yeah. That's what I say. That guy sucks. I'm glad he's gone. Yeah. Uh, I will say, Next you, you phrased this as a temporarily insane yes. right. swamp thing, and I think that the actions that are <laughs> actions that are insane are very rarely justified because mm. they're insane. Um, and I would have liked to see some more clever revenge. Like, you know, he's got access to rash giving plants. Well, see, someone's getting clever revenge in this. It just isn't Swamp Thing. Mm -hmm. That's true. Is, like, such a cool structural thing. Yeah. Hector, what do you say? man. Well, I actually did know about the context because in the collection, the paperback of the Saga of the Swamp Thing, book one, they, with the recent printing, they actually did put in issue number 20, mm. which was Alan Moore's first issue. And like you described, Amy, he came on to sort of wrap up the previous storyline. So I read that before reading the fabled issue 21. And in that, at the end of the book, I'll just recreate it real quick. Swamp Thing <laughs> is getting attacked by Sunderland's men. And I think at this point, correct me if I'm wrong, that Sunderland believes that the Swamp Thing is Alec Holland. Yeah. Like he does, like he thinks it's a guy mutated. Right. Right? So he has ordered his men to take it out. And they throw up all these great searchlights on like the edge of the swamp. I mean, Swampy's been messing up a bunch of their plans. So. Yes, Swampy. So Swampy, or he, you know, he thinks of himself as Alec, thinks that he can escape if he just gets past these lights. So he's like trying to run, and they like blast these lights at him at night. And there's these bright lights, and he's, he's running to try to just get right past the the searchlights, and then he'll be safe. Choo -choo, choo -choo, choo -choo, choo. There's all these like shots, and they shoot him in the head, and he falls over, and then he dies. And then the next issue, the one we're talking about, he's already like a body on the you know on the table. So. When I read that issue 20, I was like, Sunderland's a D. <laughs> uh, and uh, a capital D. Uh, today's show is brought to you by the letter D. <laughs> uh, so it was it was like a, a very fitting, sort of a, 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 a tragic end for that character. It was more tragic for me for, for Alec or for previously, you know, the, 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 the thing formerly known as Alec. Mm -hmm. Because it was, um, it made him scary and dangerous. And I know that Swamp Thing is kind of a hero character. But what, what Alan Moore did in this one issue, um, where he understands what he is, that he's not technically, that Alec is dead and he's just this consciousness. And he, I don't even know if it's temporary and I don't know how, and the way that the writing works, it's like, I think I might react the same way. We all might react the same way. Do we way. have that monster in us? Oh my mm -hmm. gosh. So he kills this guy and for me it made Swamp Thing like scary. Mm. Like I'm like, oh, okay, this, but, but the, what the poor thing's going through, like I, I can, cannot imagine, but this, it, this creature is a threat. This formerly Alec, this thing is a threat. And to add and, that yeah. sort of betrayal that like, as Floronic Man says, he wouldn't normally do this. So you're like, so he's scary and yeah. he's kind of betraying himself as he's losing mm -hmm. himself. Mm -hmm. So speaking of which, can we, yeah. can we get a round of applause for Hector for that reenactment? Oh, I was amazing. feeling it. I felt like I read I thought, the issue. Like swamp, like swamp, swamp thing. <laughs> oh, I get it. Swamp thing. Swamp thing. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I hope we can get the sound effects of like. <laughs> it was really cool. cool. Can you do a slow unfreezing process? I can do a helicopter. You guys want to hear it? All right. Was that it? <laughs> okay, here's, a, here's a helicopter. They're trying to get Swamp Thing. <laughs> That's a damn helicopter. Thanks. Wow. Can you do sound effects when we read the next one? Uh, yeah. yeah. Oh, oh my gosh, it. when we get into the swamp, you gotta do your cricket. Oh! Yeah. Okay, so it's, okay. and then they come over. <laughs> They're gonna kill us. All right. <laughs> wow, we just set the Whoa. stage. Wow. Then there's forager. <laughs> oh. Oh, He's foragers there. here. Okay, cool. so we, we will let the sounds of nature guide us as we go on to the next question, which is, Swamp Thing wishes 
he were a man. Mm. Floronic man, Jason Woodrow, wishes he were fully plant. Is this a case of the grass always being greener oh. on the other oh. side? Oh. Oh. Wow, well, such, oh, such jazz you delivered that with. <laughs> yeah, I can't even back. hate it. <laughs> I really yeah. she had to sell it. Amy Dallin, you are a delight. <laughs> yes. I, what a I great, help with that line. What a great joke. Uh, I, I think that uh, this is a case of the grass always greener. I think that the Floronic Man, I think Woodrow makes a great case for like wanting to be absorbed in the green. And it's kind of messed up, but I'm reading it and I'm like, eh, that sounds peaceful. Like, it's so well written that when he is telling us what he wants and why he wants it, I'm like, oh, I don't agree, but I get it, dude. I kind of <laughs> want you to get that. Like, that sounds nice. Um, and I also think that uh, with what each of these characters wants, it makes it very easy to root for Alec. No, Holland, he did root it. for the swamping, to root. Oh. To I root thought you were gonna save him. that for the one nope. that's next. Okay, I'll do it again. Title I'll say it again. Yeah. <laughs> right. I'll say it again. <laughs> <laughs> Grass is greener? No, I don't think so. I think that their wants and what they, what they ultimately wanna get run in tandem, but mm -hmm. never intersect because ultimately they want very different things. Uh, one was by choice and one was not by choice. And I think that sure Woodrue, uh, which Wood and Rue, come on, it's so good. It's not grass is greener because uh, Alec doesn't want what Woodrue has. Mm -hmm. uh, they want their own things and they're very different and uh, don't get along too well together, as it turns out. Yeah, later. and I think I think what you mentioned earlier is is sort of really important. Is that one of these characters chose this path, and one of these characters did not. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's that's you know that's that just says I, just, I don't know. I think it says so much about the characters and where they could go going forward, um, because I don't think that. Uh, you know, I don't think that Swampy is like, you know, he, he necessarily is, is going about these, um, he's not going about uh, living the same way that, that, our, that our villain is. So, um, yeah, I think it's an important and distinction to make. The choices we watch them make. Like, exactly. we watch Woodrow take steps to try to change himself, whereas Alec is just like, here's what I think I've lost. And we sort of, like, spoilers for the future, we'll find out whether he is mm. able to mm. integrate that idea. Here's a thinker. <laughs> is the grass greener or is it all the same grass because they're connected? Whoa. Is it the green. possible? Uh, it's all the same grass. What a metaphor. <laughs> what a metaphor. Uh, no, but here's how I feel. <laughs> and grass is people. And people, people are grass. People are grass. Earth. And we grow together. Earth. Roots. It's, it's all happening. Helicopters. <laughs> we're here. Wake crickets. Up, uh, crickets. <laughs> it's good. Uh, so no, what I think is that it could be construed, yes, or misconstrued as grass is greener. But in my mind, I don't think that they are envious of one another. I don't think that Woodrow wants to be a plant. He is Woodrow, and he wants to be Woodrow, but he wants to be connected. And I think ultimately he wants that connection and he wants the power that the connection gives him, but he doesn't want to succumb completely because he still wants to be Woodrow. And I think that Swamp Thing doesn't, he's not hell-bent on being Alec Holland. He wants a piece of humanity and he wants to be at peace. And those are, I think, the things that they're not envious of one another, they want different things. And I don't think that Swamp Thing looks enviously at Floronic Man because it's like, nah, I just want my humanity and I just want to be at peace with myself. And I don't think that they're envious of one another at all. Although he does effortlessly have that connection that Woodrow's like, how do I, how do I yes. get that? Yes. He just, it wouldn't look the same. So a lot happens in these first four issues, including the incredible redefinition of Jason Woodrow, AKA the Floronic Man. He was kind of a lower tier villain created during the Silver Age. What do we think of this reimagining? Hector. In a word. <laughs> Chilling. <laughs> Chilled me to Get the word. bone. I love the reimagining of this character. I think he was a perfect villainous threat for Swamp Thing to have to deal with. And I love the way that the Justice League defined him. They sort of defined him by, by their old encounters. They're like, every single time we've gone up against this guy, he's lost. How, what happened? How is he this powerful now? How, how is this this much of a threat? And I love that you had characters like Green Arrow, and I love these characters, but Green Arrow was like, f you know, fixing his little arrows, and he's like, this guy? And I'm like, buddy, you have a bow and arrow <laughs> <laughs> on the Justice League. Like, you know, he's, he's definitely underestimated. And, um, 
and I think that, that the way that he describes, the way that the Floronic Man describes what he's doing and why he's doing it was so scary to me because he describes it in a way where it's unknown to me. That's this, this tapping into nature and I don't know that connection. So I'm like, this, this is just unknown. So that's what's scary. Something that I really enjoyed about the writing is that they kept some of the just patheticness of him. Yeah. I mean, he's constantly getting dunked on by the Justice League. They're like, this guy, well, yeah. I don't getting care Getting posterized about him. by Batman. And also, yeah. even at Believe the end, how sad it's, we get for him at the end, even though he's this awful man who nearly just killed all life on Earth. It's and, so sad. And they lean into it and they make it scary because sometimes uh, pathetic people can be very scary. <laughs> um, <laughs> lots of times. And uh, and also, by the end, you're like, you feel so bad for him. I thought it was such a great take. The Justice I loved League it. was like, buddy, What's wrong with you? <laughs> That's so messed up. Come on. Justice League of Bullies, kind of. <laughs> hey. uh, Got him. Mm, nailed it. Mm. <laughs> I, you know, this was, uh, I, I really, really liked this take on this character. We spent so much time with him. He's like our narrator for most of this journey. And so I, I not only was it, was it really scary, effective mm -hmm. and scary, but you really understand just how warped he is in so many different ways. Um, it kind of reminded me of in the new Shazam movie how we got to spend a lot of time with Dr. Savannah. Mm -hmm. right. It doesn't necessarily mean that I empathize with him or care for him, but I thought that that was a great way to tell that story because ultimately it makes our hero that much more compelling. And so seeing um, seeing how how you know uh, malignant and awful this person was, but really spending that quali quality time with him <laughs> was a really cool storytelling device. That's my love language. Too. Oh yeah, Just quality time. <laughs> quality kill, Wit one and QT. I'll, I'll be, I'll be with too. <laughs> John, what anyways, you um, I, I think that what they did for the character makes perfect sense based on the threat that he actually poses. Because you really like you bring the science into it, and I love that because to this day, like certain geographical things and historical things and cultural things that I've learned, I learned through reading a comic, and really by elevating this character and making him a scientific global threat, I think that it makes perfect sense. Like the oxygen levels. Yeah, it's yeah. it's totally justified by like, hey, how do we make this guy really, really dangerous? Why don't we have him tap into the globe? Mm -hmm. And that and the way that they explain it makes perfect sense. So it's totally justified and crisp and simple enough. And I think it's genius. And they get him operating on sort of three levels at once, where we're in his head, we're very concerned about this town he's set up right. in, yeah. and we're also concerned about the whole world. Right. So with that in mind, the Justice League was powerless to stop the Floronic Man, and then Swamp Thing beats him by reasoning with him, by talking through him to nature itself. What does this say about Swamp Thing, and what does it say about the Justice League? I think it says a lot, but what it really boils down to is that the Justice League, they are damn smart and they are damn strong. But this is an issue that you cannot punch out. Uh, uh, Superman's, you know, his, his laser vision, like it's heat vision, it's not gonna do you any favors. You have to turn to an elemental like this. Mm -hmm. And it's a power that they don't even understand yet. There's even that, that little tidbit where it's like not even Raven could do anything. Right. Mm -hmm. And she's like the strongest empath yeah. there is. That was cool. Uh, and, and so you're recognizing the fact that this is an issue that cannot be punched out. We need science here. We need something bigger than ourselves. Swamp Thing is the answer to that. And he saves the day with words. And what that tees up to me is that it's like, you don't even know what this thing is capable of yet because he didn't even have to flex a power to save the day. He reasoned with him with words, what can this person actually do? Uh, and that's, I think it's, like I said, we've all been saying compelling. What a way to tee up mm -hmm. the, the vast possibilities of Swamp Thing. And of, and of course we see that like in these issues, he has every reason to kind of give up or not even care that this is happening. But we see like that heart of a hero that he, he just doesn't even really consider. He's like, well, gotta handle this now. Yeah. Um, what do you think of how he handles it? Or yeah, I think it's, I think this just shows that a character like this is essential to a greater team of heroes. Mm. You know, like that's what makes a Justice League or, or a great team like that work. That's what makes them being, that's what makes them able to take on the biggest threats to humanity or to 
the, the galaxy and beyond, right? So I think that having a character like Swamp Thing prove his worth, even if it's not necessarily, even if he, even if he didn't prove it to the Justice League, prove it to the audience. Mm. This is a character that is, if you like these guys, let me show you what they couldn't do and what he could. Like that, I don't know, how, that's, that's such a great, um, that's such a great like coming out story, even though I know this isn't the beginning, obviously, but you know what I mean. Like it shows that, that he's an important character. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, something that Swamp Thing has that the JLA does not is a skull with the vertebrae attached yes. to it. My favorite part of the book. <laughs> I loved that little guy. I love that friend. He's great. Um, but I'm, also, I'm pretty sure Batman has at least one of those. <laughs> mm, he can afford, like it. He can afford it. I'd like to okay, see enough, that. He might have a couple Prove in his it. closet. Yeah, fair enough. Um, yeah, I feel like uh, I feel like you said they can't punch this one out. Yeah. And I think that's so true. But on top of that, um, no one in the Justice League is compelled to truly understand their villain. I mean, Batman wants to analyze and is great tactical, has a great tactical mind. Uh, Raven comes close, but she can't speak the language. And mm -hmm. I think that that's the edge that Swamp Thing has and his quest for truth and understanding. And that's why he's my boy. Mm -hmm. Also, great butt, <laughs> great plant really butt. There's a you have this that is swamp not butt. me being extra because there Which are a lot <laughs> of drawings of his butt in this comic. There, there are is. it's very gratuitous, well, and they want us to you notice. How said else John yes. was everybody supposed to tell that it's still Alec Holland? Like it doesn't look right. like him in the face. But, he turns around, yeah. and you're like, oh my god, it's Alec. That's, that's Alec. It's a plant <laughs> believing it's Alec Holland's butt. <laughs> it's it's, it's, it's the tragedy thing. of it. Um, but back to the Justice League. The Justice League protects the people of Earth. That's what their specialty is. They care about human life. And to be honest, uh, to be frank, they don't really understand or care or prioritize other types of life on the planet. They're not really defenders of the planet. They're defenders of the people of the planet Earth. And you and get just great. enough of that, like, Woodrow's a little bit right about the environment. Mm. Yeah. He's not right oh, about the murder, but... Absolutely, absolutely. When, when they're telling him, you know, it's enough, and he's like, okay, are you gonna say it's enough when you do the same thing to the environment? Mm. Right, and then the question comes back on us, and it reminds us that our planet is dying, and we really <laughs> should be doing more, and we really messed it up. And um, you know, at what point are we going to pass it off to the next generation? Too real, too real. So back to the comic. <laughs> we should be doing more. We, we should, should be, be doing Alan more. Oh. <laughs> hey, that's my father. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, we sh we should. Um, <laughs> but the Justice League, like they, I feel because. They didn't even try, necessarily. They didn't fly down. They did not even have an approach, I don't think. But it was Swamp Thing who came in and was able to reason with Woodrow and go, okay, well, what are you going to do when you kill off all the people? What are you going to do for the plants? They don't want you, bro. Yeah. This isn't how they want it to go down, dude. And that's what made Woodrow back, you know, uh, just pack everything up and call it a day. And, and, um, and so, yeah, at the end of the day, for me, the Justice League is good at what it does, but characters like Swamp Thing can bring in that extra... Uh, awareness to the world and to make the Floronic Man that much of a threat, a worldly mm. threat, it's perfect for the Swamp Thing comic book. Mm -hmm. If that was happening in a Justice League comic book, I'd kind of expect the Justice League to solve it. But if I was reading Justice League and all of a sudden they can't, they're just like, we don't know what to do, and Swamp Thing comes in, I'd be like, well, guys, make them part of the team. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. But because this is Swamp Thing's journey, I thought it was perfect. And you do still see like their, the empathy of the Justice League. When they eventually arrive, like yeah. Superman sort of putting his cloak around Woodrow as they're sort of like, ah, we don't know what happened here, but uh, we're gonna take you away now. Yep. Um, and that, that wonderful line of who's watching out for LaCroix, Louisiana. Uh, oh yeah, so yep. great. Yep. Also, uh, weird uh, sponsorship that Alan wore. Yeah, Minnesota. <laughs> you know, he was trying yeah. something. <laughs> Perfect. Yep. Um, the, my favorite story that we didn't get to last time that like Alan Moore being sort of the idea of pulling this out of being new to comics was that you can read in the Saga of the Swamp Thing collections or some of the things online. Uh, apparently when he was first offered this job, uh, he got a phone call from Len Wein and he hung up on him because oh. he thought one of his friends was messing with him. Yeah. Oh. Because he loves best. those Swamp. 70s comics, which, plug, uh, you should check out the original Len Wein, Bernie Wrightson Swamp Thing. Mm -hmm. You can get the sort of wonderful, straightforward horror stories that Alan Moore is going to come in and turn on their head. Cool. Speaking of which, the story arc ends with Floronic Man heading to Arkham and Swamp Thing accepting what he is. But was this a happy ending? At first, I would have said no. Because I have my own biases and my own like internal problems that I need to figure out. Because I was trying to put 
my own ideas of happiness onto this character of Swamp Thing. I, like, I want him to be happy the way that I think human beings are happy. And the whole point of these, just these few issues are like, that's not really gonna work for this character, for this entity. So Hector, you should be happy for who he is because he, he's telling you he's happy. He ends the last panel and he's like, I'm good, I did it. Yeah. Like, and I'm like, okay. <laughs> and I just want him to still be like, uh, like think that he's still worthy of like human happiness, whether that's human relationships or human connections, human love or whatever. But the whole time this character's like, I'm not a human, but I'm still, I'm like learning how to be happy with myself, which is such a beautiful message. So yeah, the answer is yeah, it's a happy ending. Yeah, You changed your answer. I, I, I think we changed Hector's you guys mind. Did. You guys wow. did. Wow. They literally ask, are you happy yeah. at the end? And he says, yes. As long as my boy is happy, I am happy. Also, we all know the importance of personal branding. <laughs> Swamp Thing mm -hmm. named himself. Yeah. He was like, neither man nor Swamp. I'm something different. Swamp I'm thing. all of it. I'm Swamp Thing. And then he walks off into the sunset and he's like, mm -hmm. I know who I am. I have an idea of myself. Shout out to colorist Tatiana Wood for that beautiful oh, final gorgeous. thing. Mm -hmm. and, and that's a moment that makes, I think, maybe all of us like fall a little in love with Abigail Arcane, where she's mm -hmm. like, this is a lot. A lot is happening. How do you feel about it? Yeah. yeah, and it's just like that. It's like, oh, the heart. Yeah, mm -hmm. it. I think it's. I think it's as happy of an ending as you can get, considering the previous events that have just happened. Yeah, because yes. let's not forget there were skulls with vertebrae, and there were. <laughs> I don't see anything wrong. I with mean, that. people <laughs> dying in their homes. The people dying in their homes. Yeah. Truly exactly. Scary. Like there was some really intense stuff, um, and lives have certainly been altered as a result of the events that have come before. That said. I think this is the happiest ending that, that we can hope for or expect for these characters. And as, as the panel has already said, if Swampy is happy, then we should be happy. You know what would have been a little bit happier is if Superman flew in for like a high five. For Swamp Thing. <laughs> Thanks, been, Swampy. Yeah. That would be Every like, comic could have used that. Right. The post-credit yes. scene. Yeah. Yes. The, <laughs> thanks, Swampy. Yeah. Did a lot of people get brutally murdered? Yes. yes. I mean. But is it a happy ending? Absolutely. <laughs> uh, it's, it definitely is. You even get like a little Swamp Thing smile in there. Mm -hmm. And like what you're talking about, he <laughs> embraces who he is. He is happy to go back to the swamp and be connected to all these beautiful things. And he's hearing the birds chirping. And most importantly, like he says, Alec Holland finally got to lay down. He yeah. finally got yeah. to rest. And now Swamp Thing can bask in the beauty of this thing that he calls home, which is his swamp. And ultimately, uh, I 100% think that yes, it's a happy ending. There's also, I think, a hint at hope, which you were kind of talking about. The Superman putting the cape over the Floronic Man is very much like everything, you, there's, there's hope for you yet, buddy. Yeah. We'll figure this thing out. It's what we do, happy ending. Yeah, and it's the, the beginning of hopefully wonderful things to come uh, as the series, like in four issues, they take him from dead in the ice yeah. to smiling in the sun. Yeah. And in the meantime, he stops the supervillain from destroying the earth. Right. Mm -hmm. So nice beginning, I would say, to the Swamp they Thing cover saga. They a lot of ground. <laughs> yes! Oh! Issues 25 through 27 of the saga of the Swamp Thing. Yes. <laughs> These books see Swamp Thing take on the Monkey King. Ooh, spooky. Like <laughs> uh -uh. Too spooky. He's yeah. scary. I'll pass. <laughs> it's honestly a lot of it is scary. We had lots of horror elements in these comics. What was the creepiest moment? Oh my Clark? gosh. There are so many. But one thing that I want to point out for the audience that is less creepy but kind of just cool is uh, the creature from the Black Lagoon reference. <laughs> yeah. uh, I was reading that and I was like, ah. Nice, nice. <laughs> I, like, I like that one. Yeah. I'll get back to you with a, a list of okay, some okay, okay. moments. Though. Okay, Hector? The part in the comic book where the Monkey King is like attacking children and feeding on their fear at night, and then yeah. he's just like peering out of a doorway, and he's this little white monkey creature peering out of white fur, peering out of a doorway, and the comic book says, and the Monkey King just did whatever it wanted that night. I was like, no, <laughs> no, stop. Don't make us use our That's imaginations. Why would you do that? Put the oh, book scary. down. <laughs> I'll, give me a break, Alan. I'll take a break, buddy. Too scary. <laughs> yeah, the, the Monkey King just in general was terrifying. One of the parts that really stuck out to me is when the Monkey King is licking the hand of Paul and oh. Paul's just crying. <laughs> That's like, wait, what? These comics 
have the, the comics code on the front of them. They haven't started writing like mature readers on these yet. These right. must have been a real fun surprise. Yeah. yeah. Right. What the heck? <laughs> uh, what, what about uh, Roberta? Little Roberta revisiting uh, why she's in the mental institution and Come there's on. a dead baby hand creeping yeah. up and it's like, <sighs> and the sound of breath on plastic going in and out and in and out so fast. I was like, Alan Moore, come on, that's that's <sighs> real dark, dude. Yeah. Wow. Mm. Pretty dark. Pass. It I is. thought I was in for a fun romp, and this turns <laughs> out. Nope. No, not a romp. It's, it's great. It's so and great. Any, so any other best creepies from these? I thought of a couple. Okay, okay. so of course we've got a Ouija board. Mm. That's always mm. a bad sign. Next we have the creepy, terrifying stick figure drawings that a child drew of I'm seeing this at yeah. night. Uh, never. And they're all drawing no. the same monster, it, it, and it's yeah. like, oh, that's not mm. good. It really feels like but modern horror movies have been ripping off a lot maybe. of Swamp Thing stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but <laughs> I, I, speaking of modern horror movies, yeah. I have to say the Final Destination sequence oh, yeah. of like this is how you die oh, and right. all the pieces come perfectly together. I was like, nice, nice. Yeah. I mean, even though it's scary and like, you no, know, you know, it's sad when people die. Yeah, yeah. Nice. yeah. yeah. But, that, but that guy kind of had it coming. Also, <laughs> yeah, he was a D. Yeah. So beautifully set up because you're like, whoa, harsh, weird, creepy Jason? dude. Oh, you're Jason Blood. Oh, that guy sucks. Oh, it's all happening. Like, there's a real roller yeah. coaster. And would like, it have happened had he not said anything? <gasps> Yes. That's the. It would. Yeah, I think it would. <laughs> we'll never know. Yes. I feel like he wouldn't uh, enjoy causing it as much as he sort of seemed to enjoy just being like, yeah, that's gonna happen. Observing. Live with that. Bye. Yeah. I'm mm -hmm. Jason Blood. My name is very cool. Yes. Yeah. It starts with blood. That's They're his like, business oh, card. We're gonna have all the fun with this. And uh, I love that the stories were dedicated. Uh, it was with awe and affection to Jack Kirby. Yeah, that was great. Yes. Uh, and just great lines for guest star Etrigan throughout these things. Like, I like that one part where he's like, as for these shrieking statues, I'll not weep. They'll perish as they lived. Dazed, witless sheep in slaughterhouses far beyond their ken. I shed no tear for those that die unshriven, for they are men, just men. And what are men but chariots of wrath by demons? This what the hell was that? that? What happened? And he, he just blacked yeah, out. Yeah, he started fine. That was amazing. <laughs> that was so good. So scary. I, um, I like that part. That it's part was so good. good. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. it friggin' means three things because of course it does. Because why wouldn't yeah. it have three Your things? mind is so blown right now that you kicked back like, yeah, I mean, let's yeah, talk I about like this. That. It's, I it's, it's, it's that great, you really went through it. It's that great writing that is so great that you remember that like the English language like turns us on. When it is that good, did is that we why really you just crossed your lines? Oh, yeah. Hey, hello. Hello. Oh, I gotta, you maybe want to switch places? Hello, so, Mr. When, Alphabet. When, <laughs> we forget, but yeah, seriously, when the English language like delivers like that, we go, oh, Ooh. ah. I like that. And it, it I don't know how to books. do that. <laughs> yeah. We're gonna get into lots of Etrigan uh, as we go. Jason Blood in this thing struggles with his demons mm -hmm. or his demon or Etrigan specifically, yeah. yeah. So if Etrigan was completely in control of their whole duo situation, could he have straight up beaten Swamp Thing? I still think no, mm -hmm. because Swamp Thing doesn't even know what he's afraid of yet. There's inklings where he's like, autumn means fear, but it's more, it's more to help facilitate the story. We haven't really seen what he's afraid of. And even if he did have something he's really afraid of, we don't know what Swamp Thing can do. I absolutely am team. Say don't underestimate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm team ST, baby. ST. <laughs> Yeah, I would, I would also say that no, I don't think Etrigan could do it because at the end of the day, Etrigan falls back into Jason Blood, whereas Swamp Thing falls back into the green and mm. all of planet Earth. And uh, we don't know what he's capable of yet. He doesn't know what he's capable of yet. We've seen him take down the Floronic Man with words. Uh, so no, I think that this fight goes to Swamp Thing. Yeah, I agree. I think Swamp Thing is on this other superhuman powerful plane of existence that we don't even understand or comprehend. It's more than just any sort of demonic power that Etrigan might have or like super strength or claws or whatever. Anything physical, it's, it's, not, gonna, it's not gonna do anything because it's like, yeah. move that sucker out. back on. Good sound How about the moment where Boom. he's like uh, three monsters? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That was awesome. Talks about himself. <laughs> thinks he, himself a monster. That's right. Mm -hmm. When it needs to be. I think you got four of a kind here. I also think that Swamp Thing would win. I think too, you know, sort of, sort of what you were saying, Hector, you know, the idea that this Swamp Thing is a being of the green, so he's connected in a way that not a regular human could understand. But on top of that, he has these horrible, these beautiful memories and horrible memories of Alex. And so I think that, you know, he's already faced death. He's remembered his death. 
death. He's remembered this, and not even a clean death, like a very brutal, miserable death. Yeah. So what does Swamp Thing have to fear, really? I mean, I, I just can't see him getting intimidated or overwhelmed by any old demon. Mm -mm. The Saga of the Swamp Thing, number 28, written by Alan Moore, but with guest art by Sean McManus. So in this comic, Swamp Thing has to come to terms with the fact that he's not the real Alec Holland. So whose emotions are fueling Swamp Thing? Swampies or Alex? I gotta go straight up Swampy, y'all. I mean, I think it's I think it's it's really clear uh, through the storytelling and through the visuals that Swamp Thing is his own entity, and yes, he has these ties and these images and these memories of another person. But at the end of the day, it's almost as though he's witnessing. He's not connected to them in a way. I feel like it's it's all Swampy. I am I'm really like up in the air about this because that makes a lot of sense. And I feel like if you make the argument that it is Alec and his emotions that are fueling this character right now, that would also make sense. But I don't know if it's, it feels like he's connected, but also disconnected mm -hmm. with having to put this body to rest. And, he, and he, he's doing it for Alec. And you're like, are you doing it for yourself, bro? Or is it like, you know, it, so it's, it's this really, really interesting, really beautiful story. I think that at this point in the story, Swamp Thing has learned that he isn't Alec mm. for like a little bit, and he, I feel like he's kind of been processing it. So at this point, it is Swamp Thing, whatever this creature's emotions are, reflecting on Alec, understanding that he needed a proper burial, but yeah, kind of doing it as like, a, almost like a friend, not like, that's me, and that's my old body, but like, this guy, uh, I gotta, gotta go find him and, you know, give this, him, this and guy. And he doesn't look back that's, at the end, right? Yeah. Typical. He's just like, I can tell he's smiling. Yeah. yeah. Which was yeah. I have to go with Alec Holland on this one. Mm. That's how I feel about it because Swamp Thing has absorbed the memories and the consciousness of Alec Holland. So he still feels that. He still remembers these things. You know, he remembers happy moments with Linda. He remembers the fire. And it makes him sad to feel Alec's sadness because mm -hmm. those mm -hmm. memories are a part of him. Yeah. I think that when Swamp Thing feels sadness, it's because he's feeling Alec's sadness. Mm. And in that regard, I think that it's Alec Holland fueling that. That's a really compelling right? argument. Yeah. I still have to say Swamp Thing though because it's like he's watching a movie of what his life could have been. Mm -hmm. You guys ever do that? You ever just like close your eyes and think about what your life would have been like had you made gone down this road? I only make great decisions. I yeah, that's <laughs> it. We're here, that's we're it. DC Daily. Our <laughs> lives are set. Okay. What's up, dude? Yeah. High five, yeah. Daily, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Woo. But he's he's oh. looking at, he's, it's Alex's <laughs> memories, but it's, it's Swamp Thing's emotions because he's looking at what could have been and what humanity could have been like. So, yeah. Swamp Thing. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's a really interesting question because it does come down to if I remember it happening and I feel a way about it, are those my feelings or are those not? Mm -hmm. I don't know, that's why I'm making you all tell me. <laughs> uh, what stood out to you most in this book? We've got a new artist and Swamp Thing is largely by himself for most of this one. This book's like, ha, we just did a nice three-part horror supernatural uh, rock'em sock'em adventure and now a solo story. I love it. I love Solo Swamp Thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I really do. And something that surprised me is that it felt less grim than I thought it would, mm. even though the subject matter is very dark and there's hugely heavy emotional beats. I was like, there's still hope in this story and there's still, there's seeds that are planted. We do get a satisfying ending. And so it felt a little uplifting yeah, to me. Yeah, I agree. Seeds that are planted. Oh, yeah. I knew you could do that. Yeah. Okay, it just happened. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It just happened. <laughs> Pretty good. It's pretty good. Thank you, Alan Moore. Pretty good. <laughs> no, this is Bobby De Niro. Bobby, wait, what are you doing? Come Welcome on. Welcome to the conversation. <laughs> Seriously. Jeez. Man, anyways, to bring this thing back to Earth. Uh, <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> Boom. Uh, what I loved about it, you can feel the sadness in Swamp Thing's face. The mm -hmm. artwork is amazing, yes. and you're really on this journey with him, and like you can feel his emotions coming off of the page. Mm -hmm. You're just tied to him through this thing as, as he struggles with the consciousness of Alec Holland and, and how he's supposed to process all of that, and you feel all of it. The artwork is amazing, it's so good. Yeah, the thing that uh, stood out to me were the expressive faces yes. on the characters. 
you could absolutely feel all of those emotions. And also the action itself was like crisper and cleaner and it yeah. felt more like a freeze frame to an action shot from a movie versus the previous issues which have felt very dreamlike and very fluid and yeah. kind of like in a cool fog and a cool 70s fog, brother. But this was like crisp sort of like choreography and I was like, oh, okay, great, cool. So great way to read Swamp Thing. This was a very controlled, you know, like like centered, grounded. Hey! Uh, but but, but it really was. <laughs> Alan Moore. Thanks, Alan Moore. <laughs> Bobby De Niro. Uh, <laughs> oh, right. Nice. When we think of our science fiction creatures uh, or or genre icons and monsters, whatever, mm -hmm. you know, the the lack of control or the barreling, you know, uh, beast is is often what comes to mind. And this couldn't be farther from that. It was. It, he's such a poignant and um and not to say there aren't moments of like anger and fear or whatever but but overall I was I was it was really remarkable how contained and and really sweet um and heartfelt this this whole arc was yeah, yeah and it, it it's sort of amazing that they can pull that up we've seen him reattach his own arm we've seen him throw punches we've seen him wake up in a morgue and kill a guy totally. and he still <laughs> comes off as this very placid like thoughtful you know, in, in, interesting, wise, grounded guy. Yeah. And you know, I'm sure Abby's right, and Matt is fine. Oh boy. Oh. So, uh, she's yeah. so happy oh, in this issue. And oh, he's fine. Yeah, oh, the flies have no nothing fine. to worry that about there. The car was repaired by a demon. Don't, <laughs> yeah. don't an auto repair. <laughs> don't, don't do that. Don't make that deal. So in the end, do we think Swamp Thing finally got the closure he needed. Yes, however, I will say, when we finished the past couple of issues with Floronic Man, I thought he was walking off into the sunset also. So, you know, I have been wrong before, but I will say with this experience, and this is clearly a really meaningful, important event that has happened, I do feel like the closure has, has been fulfilled and, and mm -hmm. he's in a good place. For the aspect of Swamp Thing's life that was Alec Holland, Yes, mm. closure, he's literally buried that body. It does not get any more like on the nose for a metaphor than that, he literally <laughs> did that. But for Swamp Thing's other issues that he still is probably dealing with, nah, those will be in the comics we'll read soon, hopefully. <laughs> I do think that he gets closure because he gets to quite literally bury the past. Um, and he doesn't have to worry about Alec Holland anymore and right. about him being lonely in the bottom of the swamp. And he doesn't have to feel those feelings. But, and I was thinking about this just now as we're going through, he'll always be connected to Alec Holland. Always, always, always. He's buried, and what did he mark him with but a piece of the swamp. Exactly. He'll always be with Alec, and, all, and Alec will always be with him. But he can bury the past, and he's on the path now hopefully to what will eventually be a happy, fulfilled Swamp Thing. Yeah, and all this stuff that we didn't get before, like he's starting to change colors with the season. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Tapped in. Like Alec Holland in this story, I think we can finally put this one to rest. Aww. Aww. R.I.P. <laughs> R.I.P.